in September 2020, we sold our house in the UK, then moved to Normandy in France, where we bought an ancient French farmhouse with various outbuildings, including an old barn, a small cottage with two woodlands, and three and a half acres of pastured land in a beautiful national park area. Follow us on our journey as Budo and I renovate the farmhouse, manage our land and take on many projects for you to enjoy. Let the fun begin. Right, good news. Um, Budo's got one of the beams on top of the um, horses ready to prep it for us to fit. That will be me, James, Budo and Lionel. We've got another one which you've seen um, in previous videos which has to be prepped as well. So I didn't realise how long it is. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, it's heavy. Uh, I had to whack it on my shoulder to bring it here now that really. <laughs> Done it on the mini digger. Um, I know you like your weed to bix, but you're not that It's strong. heavy, look, I'll just show you, because I'll get a counter lever there. Stay there. So, it does take some lifting. Whoa. So it's heavy. Uh, it's seven meters long. Seven long. That is long. Uh, if Dep I remember rightly, it's 12 by 12, but it could be 10 by 10. I'll check it after. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just sanding it, uh, sorry, brushing it down with yep. a stiff broom, brush, get all the dirt off it. Yep. Then I'm going to give it a little sand up, or, or not sand up, a uh, planer, sorry, with my Y planer. It's that actually was a good, is that the triton, isn't it? Yeah, that's my good triton yeah. tri uh, planer. So I'm going to plane it up and then on two edges, I'm going to create a nice mould. Yeah like a half round or something whatever i've got is big enough bits yeah um and possibly possibly put some mason's miters yeah in the ends to just trim them off a bit soften them up a little bit yeah do we want them um, to look more aged are we we're going to go for that finish are we no, so no, they look leave them as they are let them yeah. as they're natural because these are uh, douglas fir yeah uh, which is a very good strength timber for yeah. taking weight, weight. And that. Um, and all these shakes are normal how it dries out they won't affect it because it's no. so dense within its mass like you know uh, perfect so what we'll be doing is cleaning this up molding it prepping it ready to go in it's going to if you turn around it's going to go through that window there we're going to build a scaffold inside yeah and then we're going to shunt it round put it on the scaffold slide it up uh, to its position then cut the other one out and then drop that onto the scaffold because yeah. I've got some electronic uh, 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 lifts, you know, like uh, crane lifts. Yeah. I showed you in a few videos, well, a, long, a lot of videos ago, yeah. that I use on my tower. Yeah. Uh, and we'll use them to pull it up uh, in that in that side, and on the outside we'll use the digger to lift it, and then we'll shunt it in yeah. and then put it in place. We'll actually film that because we'll get Abby to film yeah. that for us because I will be helping. But as they say, in a slow process, so it won't go yeah. quick, it'll take time. Ducimo, ducimo, yeah. slowly, slowly. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll, I'll let you carry on. And then I'll get the video and I'll show you with the mouldings and that finished, yep. ready for this to go in. Catch up with you later. All right, bye. Okay folks, going to give you some sort of scale of this uh, beam. It's seven metres long and uh, I've done now, I've planed it up, got the old grey off it and then I've just give it a hit with the uh, belt sander just to, um, you know, make it look a bit more clean looking. If you can see that, it's to get my shadow in the way. So. You can see these big shake through the timber. Well, that's on the downwards facing side. It doesn't matter. This is not a natural uh, processing wood. Um, and this, as you can see, I've put a nice little quadrant or quarter round. And then I've sunk it in a little bit. So you get a little bit of a groove bottom and top. And then it will go all the way through. It stops. Same at the other end as well. Stops here which is 850 from the end of the timber. Uh, you see there's a little bit I've got to cut off there. 
um, and that leaves 850 that means I go in the wall uh, at 350 mil into the wall as a bearer and then at least 500 mil before we come to uh, a, um, a mitre so I'm going to create a nice little half round here and just finish that off and then when that's up and in we will uh, oil it a couple of times just to get it nourished and then wax it job done uh, I think I said before but this is Douglas fir which is very hard fir very stable uh, once it's dried it's dried now but once it's dried it's very stable in its shape it keeps its shape its compression is very strong so it can take a lot of weight um, and these are very heavy beams the reason is is let me just point you up to the house they go from the front of the house right through to the back of the house and they are they're basically what they're doing they're creating a box effect to strengthen both walls so both walls are supporting each other if you like and then the floor goes on top so it's like a, a double whammy on the uh, beams you have to have them double strength it's probably a bit of overkill actually you know over engineered but I'm just putting back what was there so I'm keeping it as it stood the test of time it's been there hundreds of years so now we're changing it out because it got woodworm damage it was all oak and oak tends to get a lot more woodworm damage rather than uh, Douglas. They don't seem to like the Douglas. But uh, there you go. There's a bit of perspective for you on the uh, the beams. I've got another one to do now. That has taken me best part of about two and a half to three hours. So I've got another one to do right now. I'm just gonna lift this one off of the digger and then put the other one on and start on that. And then that should get that done before dark. Okay guys, speak to you later. Hi folks, well, got a big job today this is the hardest job on this house we've got to do now uh, so we've got to be very serious and methodical go through things slowly slowly just to get things right it's going to take us two or three days uh, so I'll flip you around and give uh, well James is going to be up me today you, James yep uh, so I'm going to flip you around and then show you what we're going to be up to today so coming over here I'll just give you some ideas of our dilemmas first. Um, if you see this wall here, okay, if you look up the wall, you can see it's bulging out, okay. Over time, the top end has pushed over a little bit. We're on a very thick wall, so these walls are approximately just under two foot wide, as you can see in there, and they're laid on clay, so they're very loose in there cross movement okay uh, I believe what happened in the past was this old this roof here has been changed in the last 20 years and I believe the old roof slipped off pushed forward and then pushed the front of this top out but what we got to do for the next two or three days is take out this beam this beam which we're going to tackle today or try to they're locked into these walls either side so we've got to take it very carefully. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a scaffold in the middle here, going above the beams. Then we're going to use one ton jacks or pull, uh, chain pullers. What are they called? Chain pullers, aren't they? Yeah. Chain pullers. Uh, chain, lift. chain lifts. Right. We're going to use one ton chain lifts as two to drop these beams down when we cut them on two. Then we're going to slowly shunt them over and then get a digger on the front and then pull them out onto this windowsill here. It's all uh, a bit Heath Robinson at the moment because we, we're just winging it as we're going along. Um, and then the reverse will be the new beam coming in and then opening up that back place uh, where they slot in because the beam on that end slot right through to the other end of the wall. So you see them on the outside. So we've got to nibble them out, get them out of the way, slot the new beam in, pull them up on the chains, slot it in, lock it in place, cement it. You can only do one at a time. But our big problem is... When this was built, it wasn't uh, thought out very well, even in its day, because they knew the beams would rot eventually, is this column on its own separates a window and a doorway. And uh, the, the window and the doorway, um, it separates, and 
it's just freestanding if you like and there's a lot of weight bearing around that corner so you've got the two lintels the roof and this beam coming in here all coming to this one point which is a lot of weight so we're going to put some acros in in places where we can we're going to side prop at an angle to hold everything in position and then hopefully without the digger knocking them we're going to slot the new beams in and go there but we'll give you a uh, heads up as we're going along so this could be like james said one of those viral viral videos yeah. where the front of the house falls down hopefully not but we're uh we're gonna give it a go aren't we mate hey yeah. yeah. well, what do you yeah. think our chances are <laughs> cross cross everything <laughs> well done anyway so we'll come back to you in a bit if we're uh if we've still got house <laughs> So what we got now, he's, James has just cleared out the back of this beam here so we can see where it finishes. It's not sitting on that front part of the wall. And these two wooden beams are cut off, which are sitting on top of this beam here. Uh, let's get you up there so you can see that, sorry about that. So he's cleared out the back of there, and these two beams, or lintels if you like, are rotten. And they're sitting on top of this timber. So we've got to support them off, and then around this side, We've got to support these two here as well. Lift them with the jacks to loosen this beam off and then we can cut this beam out and leave all that support in on top of them two acros. And there's a lot of weight up there. You can see that. But inside the building, we've got a beam up here which goes into the wall that side and on the wall this side. And then we've got a purlin which is right up there, goes into that wall. And it sits on the other side where I built to support. Uh, let me just turn you around. Getting dizzy in here. So it goes over to there and I'll put a support down there. Cut it in properly with a proper joint. And set it up. And then I've put timbers both ways to stop it sliding about. So that purling is held in position. Sitting on the beam. Uh, what do you think, James? I'm praying. <laughs> You're praying. We're praying. <laughs> So we've got a very dodgy area here. I mean, worst scenario, if it comes down, we're going to have to rebuild it, but hopefully it don't, and we ain't under it. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to take it slowly, slowly, methodically, bit by bit. Once we get the new beam in position and lock it all in, then we can deal with all this above it. Just tighten it all up after. Um, anyway, back in a bit. That's in here. So as you can see, me and James, we've uh, put the uh, tower up. So we've got a tower here to take the weight of the beam when we cut it. And then you can see these one ton chain pulleys. We've got two of them on with a 3000 kilo straps on the top over the top of the bars. So the most precarious part is, is when we cut this beam, it's gonna be swinging. A little bit it's going to be rocking right so we've got to be careful it doesn't rock over the scaffold uh, we're just going to get some braces in a minute on the scaffold uh, and then we're going to cut the beam one in cut the beam this end prop up the short bits with our acros here and uh, and then drop it down now hopefully we might be able to speed ramp some of that for you but we'll see it's going to be a little bit tricky but wish us luck what do you reckon James? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>
very slowly. Yep. Lift your end up. I can't go up anymore. Hang on then. James, can you put your end down onto the seal? Slowly, yeah, yeah. Rock it out. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Down. I say, hold it there. Right, that's that, that's sturdy now. We're going to reset, alright? I'll I know one thing, the dust on this beam ain't good. Could have had a mask on. <laughs> okay, lift yours up again, James. Slowly, slowly. Yep, lift it up, that's it. Keep going back. If it drops now, 
So folks, you can see we cut this beam off here, right near the wall, and uh, that end. But we've left it a little bit longer, that end, because it's uh, all rotten, that part of it anyway. So we don't want that on the other beam, because we can keep the other beams. Still got some value. Uh, the two ends are all rotten with woodworm, but the middle is all nice and strong. Uh, so what we've done now is I've braced it up here, and it goes all the way through that wall, two foot of wall. So we're going to loosen up around this here and then James is going to start tapping with a, a, a lump hammer and we're going to bring this back inside here and drop it on the floor uh, but look, you see there's one beam gone so that's one beam down three three more maneuvers to go that's beams in two and one to take this one out but we won't be doing that today because it's going to take us the best part of the rest of the day now to sort this out uh, but you can see what we've done here. We've used this heavy duty uh, scaffold that I've got as like a fulcrum point for a crane. It's like a sort of double crane, if you like, using the uh, two chain pulleys. <clears throat> it's quite stable. Uh, you saw it lift up at the back end there. That's only because I didn't put the hook in, but uh, that's good. Come back in a bit. Okay, so we've got this uh, big beam out. We're just uh, shifting it out of the way now so we can put these beams in over here. So James is just taking it over there, out of the way. But we're having to contend with loads of rain. It's just stopped for a little while. Um, so it's memories of last winter, back to the quagmire, look. Hey-ho, the joys of renovating, eh? Hey, go on, mate. Just got to go and put some timbers under it for him. So I'll cut you off here. Okay, James. So we've uh, moved the place, haven't we? We've got the yep. uh, the end bits out. So I'm just going to focus you up. James is out there getting ready to get the next beam in, which you can see just over there. We're going to bring it round. But uh, so we've got this piece out here. So the whole of the front of the house is sitting on two acros here. So we're hoping this don't collapse. And two out here. And there's two outside, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, you've got two propping acros and then two supporting acros. Uh, so the whole front of the house, the, all the way up there, six, seven tonne, whatever it is, plus the roof is all sitting on that. And then at the back here, we managed to get it out. It was all the way through the wall, sticking out the other end. So we bashed that out. That was a bit of a drama, but we got it out. And we've loosened up a bit of the wall up here. But there's rotten uh, timber in there, so we're going to pull that out and then re brick and stone it all up I mean and cement all this back in but uh it's pushing on for over half a day now already so we're hoping to get this in before yeah. uh, six o'clock because we're off to Lionel and Valerie's for dinner yeah. aren't we at six o'clock so we've got to get really going now mate yeah. <laughs> anyway I'll get you back to it show you some work pulling the beam in in a minute so what we're doing is we're swinging this right round we don't mind if that hits the floor this end, even though it's a bit muddy. Right, and then we're going to bring it up and into that windowsill. Hang on, James. James. Hang on, Phil. People on the other end. <laughs> Let me move this out of your way. Hey. Go on, so James is dragging it along now. It's a big beam, weighs a lot. I prepped it up the other day when it was all lovely and sunny. So at the moment it's upside down the beam. Okay. Because you've got the moulding on here. We're going to turn it over when we get onto that seal. Um, but you can see there's no nonsense. We're just getting on with it, get it done and get it in. Bit, bit like old Fred Dibner used to do, if anyone remembers Fred Dibner. He was the man. If you ever remember them days when he climbed the chimneys with no ropes, unbelievable. Anyway, <coughs> I digress. 
so now we've got it on there we're going to take that strap off and then shunt her over and then get her onto that scaffold you saw earlier i'll uh, film again in a bit So we've got the whole beam here, supported on here with the two chains. Slowly, slowly. And our whole life depends on that acro with that smiley man. <laughs> Done all it's those years all that ago. Up, up there. So we mustn't hit it with this. Right. So we're going in slowly, slowly, fetch a monkey. Okay, folks, uh, turned out to be an epic, this one. <laughs> right, let me flip you around. So we've now got the new beam inside the building, and we're ready to lift up this side, and then transfer this up as well at the same height, and then slot it through that hole up there. So it's like, uh, I don't know, throwing a needle in an haystack, isn't it, I suppose? What would you say? What would you say? Or well, trying to hit the bullseye on the dart from 500 metres away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we've got the beam in place down here ready and then we've spun it over twice we didn't show you that but we should have so we spun it over so we've got the mouldings on the underside okay and then that's what you're going to see from inside the building and then the, the joist will come in here at this sort of level here somewhere okay okay folks so we've uh, now got the beam in just want to show you the level if you can see the bubble it's what we call a uh, lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. That's <laughs> uh, perfect, basically. So we've got a perfect level line across a uh, level beam in now. We're also level across this way, as well as the long ways. And that is our fixed position. So we've left it on the chains. We've put acros on at each corner. One here, one here. Okay, we've kept the acros in up here. So the uh, we can keep these little timbers sorted out because we're going to block all this in, tie it in, and pull this wall back as well. Put some ties in. Uh, but it was a good day's work, wasn't it, James? Yeah, it was. Hey? Definitely. Fucking hard work that, mate. When it, oh, excuse my language, everyone. We're just knackered now, and we're guess what's it? Nearly five o'clock, so we're going out yeah. for dinner in an hour. Uh, so we're going to call it a day. Uh, hope you've been enjoying this one. It's an epic. Uh, you can see where it goes right through the wall over there. And we've got this nice beading detail here underneath. 
and if you notice you look at the uh the beam you might notice it but it's slightly higher than the older beams uh, off the floor level and the reason that is is because I used a slightly smaller beam it was actually a 10 inch beam as opposed to the 12 inch beams that are in um, which gives us that little couple of inches headroom more which is uh, ideal once we get the floor across there because what on this in this one I want to get the effect of uh, the floor uh, joist showing through the from the downstairs with the plasterboard on the inside and then we'll put some hidden lights in there and then it will start come too but uh great day's work done uh, big thanks to james my son and we've got it all to do tomorrow again lovely the other beam <laughs> you enjoyed that one yeah it's it good wasn't it it's was a good yeah. workout that one anyway guys thank you very much goodbye and uh we'll give you part two uh next week of the other beam and uh all finished work okay thank you